Welcome back to the Sermon Notes Podcast. I'm your host, Jay Strother, and with me today are my friends, Aaron Bryant, and Brian Ball. For those of you who don't know, Aaron is the campus and teaching pastor at the church at Avenue South, and I'm excited to have him on the podcast today. So this season, we're walking through the entire Bible chronologically across all of our Brentwood campuses, and this week, we'll continue to walk through the book of Deuteronomy. Uh, but before we do, Aaron, thank you for gracing us with your presence. For sure. Our table is a little more full today, but that's yeah. a good thing. We're yeah. glad you're here. Uh, so give us a- an update about what God's doing at Avenue South. Well, first of all, I, I love watching the podcast, love listening to it each week. So I'm just grateful for this resource. So just fun to join you. Uh, as far as the Avenue South building goes, we're about six weeks out from moving in. It's awesome. It's mm-hmm. wonderful. And um, it's it's very much as I read through Deuteronomy, and I read, we'll, I know we'll get there, but as I read through this yeah. wilderness journey, kind of coming to a conclusion yeah. in the promised land, wow, there are so connect. many things that make me think about God's goodness mm-hmm. in a similar fashion. Mm-hmm. So we're thrilled about that. But you think about moving out of a building, you've been in 10 years, everything from furniture to walking through with people like the rhythms and routines of a new space and greeting people. It really is all consuming, but it's a great joyful consumption. Like it's uh, it's really something that we're anticipating. So six weeks away, praise God for that. That's amazing. That's awesome. I remember when we moved into the, the Station Hill facility, I kept going back in my mind to a comment that, that I'd heard a wise man once say that it takes your soul a while to catch up to your body. Mm-hmm. And you think about this whole wilderness journey that we've been reading about the Israelites, you think about you guys moving from one place to another, there's these all these physical things that have to happen, code inspections sure. and furniture moved and you know even just helping people directions. But then the fact that there's a spiritual journey you kind of take internally as well, because at Avenue South, people have encountered the word there. They've been baptized in that facility. They've dropped their kids off at a certain place. Where, and so now the emotional part of that journey to move to a new place is significant. Just like it's, it's going to be for the Israelites as we see them getting ready for the promised land. Yeah, and we are using that spiritual metaphor, stacking stones. We've yeah. been in kind of a season yeah, of remembering really like what God has done. Good. So the people who did come to faith, people who got married in that sanctuary, like... Yeah. We've had those conversations, whether after a worship service or some other time where it said, like, wasn't God so good to show up in this way within these walls? And of course, you know, the other six days of the week as well. Um, but it has been a sweet time of reflecting on his goodness and while we look forward to the next step. So we're super excited about it. So thanks for asking. Yeah, no, it's, it's so cool. And again, things that you don't anticipate when we laid this out. We, we didn't know that Avenue South was going to be six weeks away from making your journey to your next home, uh, so to speak, and the parallels that are there. It's always cool and timely to see how God's Word intersects our lives. So speaking of that, as you have been shepherding Avenue South, preaching through these texts with them, give us some threads and some themes. What are your people latching on to, appreciating, seeing in the text as we're going through the Bible chronologically? Well, I think I'll start kind of like in reverse order. I think about yesterday, you know, we finished, you know, the first five books of the Bible and our Bible reading plan, the the Pentateuch, if you will. And um, a lot of people were fired up that like, I made it. I made it through through the Torah. I made it through the law, right? Like I can do the rest of this. Good, good. So there was an excitement where a lot of people get bogged down in Leviticus numbers. and, And that's understandable. There's an excitement like, and now we get Joshua. So I think just reading the mm-hmm. word and becoming as the expression creatures of the word, mm-hmm. that there's a there's a so there's good. an anticipation about that that's been fun to watch. Saw it this weekend. I think seeing Christ in the Old Testament has been a new revelation. Yeah. Uh, I, I know that might seem obvious to some of us, like he's he, he's there, you know. Yeah. But a lot of our people are seeing how each of these books point towards him. Awesome. And um and also with that. You know, whether it's Leviticus and all the blood sacrifice or even Deuteronomy and the law and uh, all the things we see, like just our congregation has been so grateful for the finished work of Jesus. Mm -hmm. Like praise Praise God God. for Jesus. Like all of the law makes you crave and want him more. (laughs) So that has been those hallway conversations that's been fun to see. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, that's great, man. So exciting. Well, Brian, last week we were part one uh, with our Nolansville pastor, Wade Owens. Uh, This week we get part two of your one of your favorite books of the Bible, Deuteronomy. So bring us back up to speed. Sure. And so we're finishing scene three. I know it feels like, right, in, 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 in the— We've been in, in it for a minute. We've been in it for a little bit. And so we're finishing scene three, finishing the Pentateuch, yeah. right? And like you say, that's a time to really look back and go, this, you know, because this is a single encapsulation of something that's critically important to understanding the rest of the Bible. 
right? It's really difficult to understand what Paul's writing and what the Gospels are without the without the Pentateuch. And why Jesus and the quoted these verses right, why, so often. Right, well, Deuteronomy, right, was one of his mm-hmm. most quoted mm-hmm. books. Yeah. And so that's that's spectacular. Then we went back through the, the first 11 books, which were Moses' first sermon, right, chapters 1 through 4, and that's the history. How did we get to where we are? How did we end up? And it was both their disobedience and God's faithfulness yeah. that's drawn. Yeah, up. one of the remarkable things about Scripture is it doesn't whitewash, you know, the reality of what God's people did or what they went through. It doesn't try to hide right. their flaws, their scars, their sins. It's it's very transparent. But that's one of the things that makes it so appealing is because that's the life we all lead, mm-hmm. right? And so I've never found a text like the Bible that describes the human condition anywhere near as accurately. And yeah. so that's one of the arguments, right, for the for the for the Christian faith is that it describes us as yeah. we really are, warts and all. Yeah. Right? Disobedience and all. Well think about that. For somebody who might be a new believer, they might want to start a quiet time, if you will, or a Bible reading plan, the New Testament. Yep. It feels a little easier, a little bit more digestible. And then you're kind of almost in a loving way, but kind of forced to start in Genesis through a chronological Bible reading plan. And you resonate with these stories because they are raw That's and right. they're real. Right. And they're applicable to 2024 just as much as when they unfolded in the Old Testament. Absolutely. For sure. Absolutely. Fear of man, right? Mm-hmm. We see throughout this that they choose fear of man over fear of God. Mm-hmm. And we all do that. But then there's beautiful passages where the Lord encourages us. One of those, of course, is the Shema. Yeah. Right. Deuteronomy. Yeah. So last week you and Wade covered it, but I wanted to go back and, and hit on it just, just for a moment because it is so critical. Yeah. When Jesus was asked, out of all these laws, 613, the <laughs> right. Pharisees, had deduced right from 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 the Old Testament from these passages th- six hundred thirteen which is the most important he quotes Deuteronomy six yeah love the Lord your God with all your heart with all your soul and with all of your strength Amen. and he says these commands are to be in your heart yep and then the very next thing he says is you are to impress these upon your children yep and so I wanted to spend a moment talking about that because I, I hope uh, you know our listeners understand that the entire way we think about next generation ministry across all nine campuses is really rooted in Deuteronomy chapter six that's awesome in the idea that when Jesus said here is the priority love God with everything you are yep Right. And the very next thing we do is that we live that out so that we can model that to the next generation. That's right. So that parents model it to their children, grandparents model it to their grandchildren. As leaders in the church, we model it before our congregation. Yep. Uh, and so, Aaron, you know, one of the things that's fun at Avenue South that you guys have seen a, a tremendous growth in is next gen ministry. Yep. As a matter of fact, the new facility, the, the new part of the building, uh, renovating the previous part, but the new part of the building is really for next gen ministry. Talk to us a little bit about how you've seen that. Deuteronomy 6 principle played out as you've seen your next generation ministry grow? Yeah, well, I think, Jay, we'd all agree, like, you don't need a physical brick and mortar building to make disciples. Like, we we can do that, and we want to equip parents to do that, but but when we have a space to corporately gather, as God calls us to, I mean, that's what Deuteronomy is. Like, they're on the plains of Moab (laughs) this week, like a big covenant renewal (laughs) service, and that's what we do 52 Sundays out of the year. It's a gathering. Right, Right. and so when Mm. we gather together corporately, whether it's Sunday, Wednesday night, whatever it may be, um, you think about helping the next generation choose life yep. and helping them flourish. Awesome. What I've seen, guys, as we've preached through this is there is, for us as adults that are parents, like there's a resonance with this is better than what I would choose. Mm-hmm. There's right. a way that seems right to us, as Proverbs says, yep. 1921. But it's the Lord who directs our steps. So you see adults, especially parents mm-hmm. uh, in our congregation, kind of say, this is what I need to pursue so that I can flourish in relationship with God and others. And then when you talk about like so many of these commands have implications for future generations yep. and our kids, kids that we we may never meet, you know, like then you see the stakes heightened just a little bit like mm-hmm. I want to do this well. Right. And that's been fun to right. watch parents say this is going to have implications 50 years from now. Oh, yeah. yeah. And to see them not like fear that, but to say, I'm going to lean in. Yeah. Right. I'm going to go all in. Yeah. And, and really trust God's word. Mm-hmm. And so, wow. um, yes. So the classrooms are full. That's one of the reasons we're building a building <laughs> yeah. that has twice as much preschool and children's space. And to think about having environments where we can. Uh, call people to pursue what I yeah. just described. That's well, and you're exciting. modeling that. That passage goes on to say, talk about these things yep. basically all of the time. Right. When you walk along the road, so when you're active, or when you sit at home, right? When you're when you're chilling out, talk about them first thing in the morning and last thing at night. And so our facilities, like you said, you can disciple kids wherever, and and we want to push that to the home as much as possible. But they they provide catalyst spaces by which we can model what that looks like to show people how to apply God's word to every part of their lives. And a 
especially, you know, if we say we want to equip parents and we, we want to make everything mobilized, that you can do this all 168 hours a week, not just on a Sunday morning. That's it. Think about families or parents that, that might come in our building that don't have a faith background, right? but but we're interested in what's going on here. And they might not know, where do I start to disciple my kids? So to have leaders that want to pour the gospel in the next generation while the parents may be exploring the claims of Christ themselves. Yeah. That's what's exciting about mm-hmm. the facilities, about this space, about next gen ministry. Yeah. And, and part of what's been fun this. about this series is you're hearing the conversations as parents are listening to the audio Bible in their cars and their right. kids are overhearing it and they're talking about it at home together. I mean, it's it's Deuteronomy six is right. is taking place in the life of our church and well, that's encouraging. It's to an me. immersion, right? Yeah. Because that's what Good the object, that's what the objective of both the facility gathered worship small group gatherings listen to the Bible in the car it's about being immersed mm-hmm. right is that praying without ceasing it's the ever present word yeah right because he is present with us and now his written word right is playing through the loudspeakers of our car and playing through the d- devices in our house and I think the the fleshly assumption is like our our kids my my gosh there's a lot going on like in Deuteronomy they, they, can't, <laughs> they, they can't absorb this. But some of my favorite moments of my life the last month have been sitting at our breakfast counter while my 12-year-old daughter's like, um, I don't I don't know that I'm good with what I'm reading here. <laughs> yeah, right. And right. Yeah. Help me with this. Yeah. And so Beautiful. we start talking about things we would never sure. talk about yep. otherwise. And the scripture's guiding that. And so like I, I found my relationship with my daughter, like us becoming closer, fused with one another. Praise God. And the the words, the catalyst for that, right? Yeah. So when you think about what it could do for parents and 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 the generations, we're seeing that at all yeah. of our campuses, yeah. I believe. Yeah. That's awesome. That's, that's so absolutely good. awesome. Yeah. And, well, and that's what it's supposed to do, right? Bring us together. The Holy Spirit always draws to unity, right? And so this mm-hmm. continues to draw us to unity across nine campuses, right? 10,000 people, 12,000 people. Yeah. How awesome Households, is that? homes. Households, homes. You know, I mean, apartments. It's, yeah, it's crazy. College it's, dorm it's rooms. Crazy. Yeah. Only God can do something like that. Right? That's Only good. God right. can do something like that. That's so and that, that's just absolutely awesome. All right. I, 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 know, I know, man. We, 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 talk, we, we, we could go for hours, the three of us. <laughs> yes, and yes, we do yes, sometimes. We, we have for years. We have so. for years. <laughs> Let's move along. <laughs> okay, so we, we should probably get to other things. Okay, so we're in. So we're looking at the rest yeah. of Deuteronomy, right? 12 through 36. And the second sermon is really chapters 5 through 26. We looked at 5 mm-hmm. through 11, which is kind of the high, high level flyover. And then 12 through 26 is more of the detail. And we figured mm-hmm. rather than kind of grind through the detail, we'd pick a couple of things because they're relevant throughout the rest of Scripture. Yeah. The first being Deut- the, chapter 17. The end of chapter 17, he talks about there's going to be, when you make a king, right, when you have a king over you, this is the way that they're prescribed to act, right? Mm-hmm. They don't go get a lot of horses. They don't gather silver and gold, right? They don't make it about themselves. First thing they do when they come into office is write the book of the law for themselves, Right. Yeah, every How, king was supposed every, to do that. Right. Write a copy of the law. Yep. And, it's one of the reasons I, I journal my prayers. Right. Is it slows you down. You have to think about what you're writing. And the first act of a king of Israel in office was to be to write the law by hand so that you right, would absorb it into your heart. Because there's something about writing. No mm-hmm. offense to keyboards or yeah. but there's nope. something it's, about writing yes. that changes how we process information. It's true. And I just think that's absolutely beautiful. Because when we get over to, to King Saul, yeah. we're all surprised that the nation is is going, you know, we want a king. When God said, I want to be your king, he's like, well, God already made preparation for that. The really tragic part yeah. is when you get to Solomon. Yeah. Because he disobeys every single thing Deuteronomy Deuteronomy 17 lays out for a king to do. Mm-hmm. You can go verse, and I've got the, the scripture notations in my notes. You yeah. Everything that a king was supposed to do, not to do, mm-hmm. he did every last one. Of them. Yeah, it's interesting. Uh, you know, I've been to Israel a few times, and some of my Jewish friends say, there is something better than the wisdom and riches of Solomon. Because he's renowned yes, for those things. That's right. And they, they're saying is, it is to obey. Mm. That that that's fantastic. better than the wisdom and riches. He had those things. Right. The Lord gifted him with those things. But yet they will say, because his legacy ended up being a divided kingdom. And we're getting way ahead of the story <laughs> now, of course. But but again, let's think about this. God's provision for something that he knew was coming, right? right that the people couldn't yet see. Right. Couldn't even conceive. Yeah. Right. And how gracious is it? So like, how good is our God and gracious to say, like, I mean, as we read these words and we dust for God's fingerprints and you see what he was telling them about kings and what he instructed Solomon, like, don't multiply horses. Right. Like, don't put your trust in your army right. yeah. or your strength. Don't trust in chariots. Don't trust in gold or yep. wealth. Don't multiply. It literally says wives or women. Like, don't give your heart to things other than me first. Right. Like, And then even then, there's a right order That's for right. the relationships you're in. 
And so we're in 2024 <laughs> and there's nothing new under the sun. Right. God's word is living and active. And if we stopped right here and said, we would do well, the three of us as men, as leaders, like to, yeah. to model this and encourage mm-hmm. other men to do that. Um, there's so much here that you can build your life on today. Right. 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 And and just like I love that the order right the orders of these things are so critically important. Well, they're just critically important. Yeah, and and again, when we're talking about law, sometimes people assume right grace came later with Jesus. Right. No, no, no. Remember, like the grace was first. Right. God called these people first, then gave them the law as a great grace. Right. So they would know how to live best. Well, we wouldn't know what sin was. Right? That's what Paul says. Right. Without the law. Right? And is the law beautiful and lovely? Absolutely. It tells me what sin is. Because mm-hmm. then I know how to flourish in God's kingdom. Yeah. I know how to be obedient. Right. Without that, I would just have to wonder. We we see so many capricious gods out there, right? Back mm-hmm. back in this time and today. Sure. Right. These capricious gods of the market, these capricious jobs of, of right, your work, right? Where anything can happen at the whim of somebody. And God says, I'm not like that. That's right. There's an order, there's a way, and it is right. Mm -hmm. And this is how you will flourish. And I love the other, the other section I really love out of this is Deuteronomy 20, 24. Mm -hmm. And the end, it talks about dealing with, and there's this trio that goes throughout Mm -hmm. Deuteronomy. I think it first came in 10, Mm -hmm. but it's the widow, the orphan, and the sojourner, or the the foreigner. Yeah. Right. And, and that we are supposed to, you don't go over your fields a second time. You leave. And so God is making provision within our work, within our days, right, to provide for these people, to provide for those that can't provide for themselves. Mm -hmm. And what we think about right today is we're encouraged to plow over into our brother's field. Right. Not take, just leave. Take everything order, you take can everything get. Or to go back and pick up what, what we, we left, left. Right. that he says leave exactly. because like that's mine. Right. That's exactly that's, right. That's what we feel. Right. And that, but that's what that's how that gets self-absorbed. Whereas yeah. God has made provision. And one of the questions we ask, right, is do we as our families, as, as leaders, make time? for those godly things to happen. Is there provision in our time? Is there provision in our budget? Is there provision in our prayer? Is there provision in, in, in our service? Yeah, you were talking about how the law really reveals our heart. Mm. And, and, and yeah. all throughout, especially beginning here in Deuteronomy, it becomes very, very clear. It's, it's clear even before that. But, sure. but And you're going to hear it, especially as we get into the, the word of the prophets. Yep. God will say, what you do for those who can't do anything for you in return is a measure of your heart. Yep. So the people who are powerless in that society, the yep. widow, the orphan, again, the 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 oppressed or the yeah. outsider, you know, what you are willing to do for them because God's heart is what? He's a giver. Right. He's a, he's a grace giver. Right. And so he wants us to reflect his heart. Right. And if we don't leave any margin in our lives, if we just follow the consumeristic patterns of the world, if it's all about how much we accumulate for ourselves to build our little mini kingdoms, God's saying, man, you're missing my heart in right. all of this. That's beautiful. Well, I think the heart is the center of it. So like there are things we need to do obediently. So after every worship service, after every Bible study or life group, there there should be some things we should act on, right? Sure. And we should obey God's word. But it's not just solely all of this. Even the law is not just solely about outward obedience. Right. Mm-hmm. Because it's always, obedience really is always a matter of the heart. Yeah, it's yep. an overflow. Like it starts right. from within. The That's heart fantastic. gets like, for instance, the heart gets captivated by the gospel and says, I, I can't believe where I am because of what Christ has done. Right. Therefore, in response to that, I want to obey. Like right. the heart mm-hmm. is moved That's right. to obedience. That's fantastic. I think, but but I think our people have also seen that like we're we're not preaching these so that you'll obey and right. be a good legalist, yeah. right? Like right. Yeah. it's it's still about the heart. That's Always right. has been. That's right. That's awesome. Well, I love the picture in your office, right? Yeah. About the water flowing into the cup, and you just can't. We're conduits. That's right. That's what that's what li- the life of a Christian is to be a conduit mm-hmm. of the Lord. Yeah. And and let's not miss this. Remember that God's people were blessed. Oh man. They had his yep. truth. They had it to be a blessing right. to others. That's exactly. It was right. never intended to stop with Israel alone. Right. So sometimes we have this, well, I'm we're God's chosen people, you know. So we're, you know, we're now in the new covenant, right? We're we're believers. We're on God's side. You know, but that why is why are we given his truth? Why are we given, you know, these blessings so that we can be a conduit to use your word, right. you know, to the people around. And that's what you pointed out in Deuteronomy 24. Like yeah. your field is given right. for the sake of blessing others. others. That's it's not fantastic. solely for yourself. And I think here, here's the challenge for me. That's awesome. If I can just be vulnerable. Yeah, like please. It, when he says, don't go back and pick up the sheath, the, the, the sheaves that fall, leave that for the, the fatherless and the widow or the orphan. Like 
I think when we want to go back and get, because it's my, like, right. do I really trust that if I obey God and leave it for somebody who needs it, he's still going to take care of me? Right. That's right. So when yeah. it comes down to it, it wow. really is a matter of my own heart. He reveals, yep. like you talk about, it's like a mirror. Mm-hmm. The law's like yeah. a mirror. Mm-hmm. It reveals my heart or my lack of trust right. in him. And I, I mean, I have to own that. Like, yeah. if I don't obey, is it because I really, I don't trust him. That's exactly right. right. So and, that's convicting. Well, that, and that's what it comes down to, right? I mean, all of this comes down to do the Israelites. I mean, and that's where we come into to Deuteronomy 30, right? The next thing we're going to talk about is mm-hmm. he says, I set before you, this is what Brian so brilliantly proved yeah, yesterday. Did a great right? job. You, you know, I give set before you like, the choice of life and death. And then he gives us the answer to the question, right? He's not, he's so gracious. Yeah. He not only asks questions. on the bottom shelf. Yeah, exactly. The exactly. It's not a get, choose yeah. life, right? Yeah. I mean, so that you may live. So that you may live. Flourish. I mean, I don't right. know how it gets any simpler right. than that. Mm-hmm. But still we don't choose. And Moses goes on, right? And mm-hmm. some say, and you're not going to choose life. Yeah. Right. Because, and he says, it's not far away. You don't have to have somebody go get it for you. Yeah. Right. So it's very near to you. It's in your mouth, in your heart. Mm-hmm. Right. That, that, that these, these choices, these things, but still we don't obey. And that's just, that's, that's really tragic even today because he mm-hmm. sets before each of us the choice of life and death. Yeah. Which makes it, brings us back to the gospel. Right. That, you know, our inability to keep the law, our yep. inability to do these things all reveals our need for God even more. That's exactly right. You know, my flesh wants to pursue what I want. Yep. So when he says, choose life, I read a text like that. I'm like, well, who who would willingly choose death? Because like, <laughs> sign me up. Yeah. Um, but we end up choosing what our flesh wants, which yep. is not good for us, right? right. Mm-hmm. And so when you come down to mm-hmm. it, uh, I think it's verse 17 of chapter mm-hmm. 30 mm-hmm. or 18. He says, yeah. but if your hearts, so right. there we go again right. with the heart being at the yep. root of the issue. Yep. Yep. If your hearts turn away from me and you don't listen to me. Yep. So we talk about when we pray, even when we preach, like, Lord, open the eyes and the ears of our hearts. Yep. What we've seen in this Bible reading plan is when you sit down and you think, I'm going to read four or five chapters, you close it, you pray, and you're like, I didn't feel super spiritual. Like, God didn't show up in my living room at 5 a.m. Like, what we're doing is tuning the ears of our heart to the sound of his voice. Yep. Yep. Which is That's awesome. stronger and better than our flesh. Yep. So each little day, stacking a day, stacking weeks, stacking 365 days a year is helping put us in a position to obey right. because he is our life. Like he's going to give us the ability to obey. Yeah. Right. And that's, that's what's yeah, happening. To put a word picture on that, the rabbis call it stringing pearls. Mm. When you begin that's to good. connect those scriptures and you realize yeah. how they all build towards, again, life, flourishing, right. wholeness, health, right. all of those things, you know, emotionally, spiritually, physically, all, all of them stacked together. And that's why the, the law has to be taken as a whole, yep. you know, because we realize that God was putting all those pieces together for his people so that they could live yep. under his grace as a free people, that's just awesome. you know? Yeah. Well, it's the living water running over our souls, right? Yeah. Like water, when you see those, those I love those streams in a, in a field, right, where they've just worn against bedrock, and that mm-hmm. bedrock is smooth. And you can see how that's been tendered. Well-worn that's, paths. Yeah. Right. Well, that's what our whole family got, well-worn paths. We go to the same place for vacation, same place, and we know everybody and everybody's story. Sure. But that's a way you can minister to people because I know what their concerns are. I know we go to the same restaurants. I know all the servers. We know most of the cooks. But that's all about these these things, right? Helping them see life, helping them choose life is being able to witness to them. You have to know people, yeah. know things. Yeah, and it, again, wilderness university. God <laughs> yeah. is training his people. Yeah. He's equipping yeah. them yep. because he knows, as we'll get into in the next story, right? And Joshua, they're going to face challenges. Yep. He's sovereign, yep. and yet they have a responsibility right. to trust and obey as the old hymn says because there's no other way right to be happy to be fulfilled to flourish in jesus but to trust and obey right and so that's that's what it looks like to choose life and to be free right yeah to be free speaking of freedom I, you know when i was growing up maybe i just didn't understand this godly parents grew up under godly preaching like but i just kind of viewed the law as like foreboding and mm. and even reading deuteronomy like sure. you know we don't gravitate towards that we've mentioned that but when you understand God's grace to mm-hmm. us through the law, like you read the Old Testament and it makes you, like I said, grateful for Jesus. You yeah. have to understand the weight of your sin. I can't fix it. Right. Therefore, I need a Savior. In the same way, like the law and, and obeying God's commands actually leads to liberty. Right. But we don't get that until right. a certain point, right? Right. That old metaphor of like the banks of the river, those boundaries, mm-hmm. yep. like if they're wide, you got a pond and it's stagnated. But if they're tight, you can get momentum and life and flourishing. Yeah. The law, God's commands, it actually leads to life. That's and right. obviously it doesn't justify us. We put our faith in the finished work of Christ. Right. But when we read and obey, it can help us flourish. Well, I think sometimes we wait too late in life to figure that out. It sanctifies us. 
Yeah. Right. Well, it doesn't justify us. It does sanctify us. Yeah. Right? And so, but that's Good the purpose of the law and the understanding of where it fits in what we do. Yeah. Right. It Back to Leviticus, be holy. Right. As I am. The Lord, the God. In other words, I, Lord, God, I want holy. you to look like me. Right. <laughs> you know, and you're my children, and right. so I want you. I want you to look, look like me because when you do, you're going to feel the most fulfilled. Absolutely. Uh, you know, you're going to feel like th- this is this is true life that's worth living. Well, it is because you right. That's where the fruit of the spirit is produced. Right. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, gentleness, goodness, faithfulness, and self control. That's what comes out of that life. And who doesn't write? How is that not attractive? In this day of contention and strife and want and right to, to exhibit the fruit of the spirit in a flourishing life, there is nothing more beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's our inheritance, right? <laughs> like right. being with, like they're going to the promised <laughs> land. Yeah. And really the blessing was you get to be with me, me there. Yeah. Right. I'm leading you to a place yep. where you can rest with me. Right. Right. And so as we rest uh, and are with Christ. Yeah. Hebrews three he, and four. Right. right. He yeah. starts producing the things that you reference right. from the book of Galatians. Like he starts producing those things in us. Then that's, that's the sweet stuff. Uh, yeah. And, and so it, again, let's, you know, bring it home. Our gospel <laughs> connects here, you know, for the, for the Israelites, part of the covenant was the land. It was yep, offspring. Of it was blessing. It was the land. Those were the three big parts of the covenant. We know now, Right. That that land for us is spiritual. Like right. Jesus is our promised land. That's right. And so the sanctification process helps us look more like him yep. as we're prepared for our inheritance that he has already gone ahead to prepare for us yeah. as well. Yeah, it's it's the, it's not the place, it's the presence. Yeah, right. good. Which, which, circ- which circles back to your facility. We can disciple children anywhere mm-hmm. because it's the presence of God that's with us. You know, and it, But it happens when we're gathered, and we can be gathered anywhere. That's right. And you can build a what this thing, listen, <laughs> praise God for the generosity of God's people and all of our campuses helping us get to this point. Yeah. But if he's not in this place, it doesn't matter what That's happens right. in That's it, exactly right? right? So back to your point about like place has has a part in it. Sure. But it's about the presence. Yeah. 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 And, and so there's this interesting note, right? Because we we we, you know, Moses passes away at the end yeah. of Deuteronomy. And so it's the end of an era. Yeah. And so like any, you know, great faithful people, we honor Moses, we remember his legacy and his memory, his faithfulness to the Lord. And yet Moses doesn't get to enter the promised land. Right. You know, because because of his anger, because of his sin. But yet that reminds Reminds us, it was never about Moses right. in the first place. That's awesome, and that well, and to, we get so person centric, yeah. right? But one of the things the Bible does, even of all the great heroes that I can think of, is show us their flaws, mm-hmm. show us that they are not able to do it. They are not right. who we have faith in. While they're and there are places where Paul says, right, as I imitate Christ, imitate me. Yeah. Right, and that's what right. as leaders, that's what right. as 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 leaders in our household, as leaders in the church, imitate us as we imitate Christ, not because of us. That's right, because of Christ. Yeah, right. at work in us. Right, at work in us. And God certainly worked through Moses in a powerful way. Absolutely. You know, and so there's almost these mixed emotions as you kind of come to the end of the you know these first five books. It's like, man. You know, I, I, you know, Moses, gosh, I wish he would have gotten in the promised land. And then we read the story of the transfiguration (laughs) and and he's there. Uh, And so, but again, it reminds us that, that Jesus is the new and better Moses. The only one who, who is not only the author of the law, but the perfecter, the keeper, the one who fulfilled it all as well for us. That's just beautiful. Just beautiful. And, and so we kind of close, right? We look at kind of where where God, where, where God fits in this. And I love the, the 30, right? That he gives us the choice of life. He makes provision for the choice yeah. of life. And he does all of these things to bring us to this point, to choose life. But they're getting ready to enter the promised land. And so here you have a choice. God is faithful to his word. He makes a promise. He keeps a promise. That's exactly right. And then you come to Christ, right? God says, maybe this, is, maybe this choose life and death is a little theologically daunting. So let me put the word in the flesh. And let me show you what this death looks like, right? It's his nail-pierced hands and his spear-pierced side, yeah. right? That's what death looks like. But then there's the resurrection. And so because of his resurrection, we can choose life. Mm-hmm. How awesome is that? Yeah, especially this season as oh, we're yes. preparing to move, sure. you know, ne- yeah, next next Sunday is Palm Sunday and then on through Holy Week to, to make those connections, as Aaron was pointing out earlier. Yeah. You know, I think we've all seen, you know, the connections, but to to see with greater clarity That's what right. God was pointing to with all of this. That's exactly right. And then, then what do we do, right? We choose life, right? We are a free people. And we've got to live like a free people. We, we still live bound to so many things in this life. And we as Christians, we've got to be a free people in the way God intends for you us. You have to be bound free. to Christ. That's exactly right. That's where freedom comes that's from. That's exactly You know, when you close your Bible in the Bible reading plan and you start your day, yeah. that, that's how it is for me. You know, whether, you know, you, you get the kids in the car or whether you're leaving your college dorm and heading to class, whatever it may be, 
you know, you, you get to continue to feed off the word for the rest of the day. And yes, what, right. life, life's hard. Oh yeah. I mean, yeah. it's hard for everybody. <laughs> yeah. Let's don't yeah. act like following Jesus removes <laughs> yeah. all the challenges. I mean, he even said, you're going to have hardship. Um, but in 30 where it says, but he's your life. Yep. Mm-hmm. So God's not asking any of us to keep this perfectly wow. because yeah. I mean, it's revealed through Moses and others. They can't, he has, so cling to him, that dependency, right. like be bound to yeah. him mm-hmm. and yes. the freedom and the ability to fulfill the things that God calls and invites us into will rest on Jesus. Yeah. So in Man, a practical isn't that, sense, isn't that encouraging? Yeah, yeah, you're going to have a hundred decisions today. That's right. Do you choose life? Right. <laughs> you right. know, yeah. Or, or do you, do you try to go your own way? Right. You know, and in all of those decisions, that cultivates the, the Christ likeness, the character, the the withness, the promises that God makes to His people. That I am with you; yeah. I won't leave you; I won't abandon you. Yeah. Which is going to lead us into Joshua next week, and Absolutely. you know his his charge to Joshua. So, well, Aaron, man, thank you. It's been awesome to have you, you guys. Here I with love us both today. of you. It's been great. Thanks for inviting me. It's yeah. been good. Fun stuff. Fun yeah, stuff. we better stop ourselves, yeah, exactly. or we'll go on for another thirty minutes easy. So, but uh, but it's a great time of year, and so that's it for today's episode. Of the Sermon Notes podcast. We hope that you found our discussion helpful. And if you did, help us out by leaving us a review in your podcast app or dropping a comment in the YouTube comments below. If you have any questions about anything you've read, leave those in the comments as well. And we'll try to get to those next week. And as always, thank you for watching, listening, and we will see you next time.